always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome to GSMC Entertainment Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Cynthia, and again, as always, happy to be here, happy to be recording another episode for the entertainment show, and there was a lot of new things that popped up over the weekend, of course, one of those being the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl halftime show specifically, um, and that's the majority of the chunk of the biggest chunk of what I'll be discussing in today's show. Um, just like most of you, I was, well, I was not at a bar or I didn't go to a restaurant to watch the game. This year, I decided to stay home, super low key, super chill with my brother, my parents in our house, and we watched um, the game there. Usually, every year, I either go to like a Super Bowl party or I go out and watch the game, but it's just really hectic and there's always every bar or restaurant's super crowded. Prices are jacked up. And I'm just not about that life this year. So I wanted to save money, have a low-key time, and spend some quality time with my family as well, and watch the Super Bowl. And what's crazy is that I <laughs> I honestly, I'm being totally honest here, I don't ever really understand truly what's going on in football games I mean you would think after being a cheerleader and going to hundreds and hundreds of games during my 10 years of cheerleading and cheering at those football games I would understand a little bit of football but I don't (laughs) but this time yesterday's game you know Kansas City Chiefs versus the San Francisco San Francisco 49ers I actually was able to comprehend a little bit of the game mainly due to my brother there helping me and kind of dissecting the game for me and telling me like what each flag means and the plays and whatnot. But I actually was able to enjoy the game and from start to finish, I think that was another really important factor. Usually in football games, I watch them like halfway or like I only watch a quarter of the game and then I'm, I'm lost. But I actually sat there and watched the full, what was like three and a half hour long game. And I actually was tuned in and I was into it and I was actually like cheering and neither one of those teams are, I didn't really care who was going to win the Super Bowl team, to be honest. Um, neither of those teams are really my family teams. We grew up um, supporting the Raiders, who are not the Oakland Raiders anymore. They are Las Vegas Raiders. So yeah, I didn't really care who was going to win. I was just mainly there for the Super Bowl halftime show with, you guys already know, the two Latina queens, Shakira and Jennifer Lopez, a.k.a. J-Lo. And that's the only reason also I think why my parents tuned in as well. I mean, uh, if you guys don't know, or this is your first time listening to me on this podcast, um, I am from Latin background. So this year's Super Bowl was really um special to us and really spoke to us and I think I could speak for many other Latin communities and Latin families out there because of the two major headliners and I mean what's better than one diva headlining this year's Super Bowl halftime show two so we have you know a ripping Latina talent from Barranquilla to the Bronx we got Colombian rock pop queen Shakira and superstar J-Lo they both touched down on Miami's Hard Rock Stadium Sunday night yesterday and they definitely put on a show you cannot you can't remember to forget like you will not forget this show it was monumental historical making but I want to first talk about kind of some of the steps that led to Shakira and J-Lo headlining and some of the backlash actually that these uh, two queens may have been receiving when they accepted this NFL gig. So in the months leading up to the show, 
both fans and detractors came down on these two pop stars for even accepting performing at the NFL, um, you know, especially in large due to Colin Kaepernick. For those of you who may not be aware, for those of you who don't follow sports, football, Colin Kaepernick, he played, he was the quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers and he was best known for kneeling during the national anthem in protest of racial inequality through the 2016 football season. And several African-American performers, such as Rihanna to Cardi B, they have declined uh, performing during that halftime slot in support of Colin Kaepernick. And as long as Colin Kaepernick remained jobless, not playing football, um, you know, for exercising his right to free speech, many artists would boycott that as well. And many people came, you know, they came at Shakira and J-Lo for accepting this gig because, again, in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick. So was this all kind of controversy with, like, should you accept performing at the, you know, NFL halftime show? Should you not? Or Super Bowl halftime show? So it was a lot of mixed reviews. I mean, everyone's always going to be upset. Someone's always going to be offended. Someone's always going to feel a type of way about someone doing something or someone not doing anything. So then now, so that was really the kind of the backlash they initially got. However, Jay Z, so Jay Z was also in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick, and he was among the many other African American artists and just other artists in general who were also boycotting the NFL. That is until 2019, last year, when the NFL proposed a partnership with Jay Z's agency, Rock Nation, and to help rehab their reputation by curating a diverse lineup of performers for its Miami edition of the Super Bowl. And when paired with the Inspire Change Initiative, which has proposed $100 million in grants to grassroots social justice groups, Jay Z argued it was a challenge worth accepting. And in honor of, you know, Miami's uh, very high Hispanic population, 70 percent Hispanic population, he promptly recruited the two most famous Latinas he could he could find to represent, of course, those being J-Lo and Shakira. So I think that was a very smart move of Jay-Z and especially being in Miami, I feel that was the perfect location to introduce a uh, Latin fusion, Latin culture into such a big, you know, all American platform. And it was so amazing to see. However, I think if they were to try to bring JLo and Shakira into a different stadium, say somewhere not as accepting or somewhere with a very low Hispanic population, I don't know. Uh, somewhere maybe like in the Midwest, probably wouldn't have been um, as inviting or they probably wouldn't have felt as welcomed to do the halftime show just because, again, Miami, it's a huge Hispanic population and you're bringing these two amazing, one of the biggest Latina artists onto an all-American platform. So I thought that was a really smart move and I just think the location was perfect for these two artists to perform the halftime show. I think anywhere else might have had even more of a controversy, might have had even more negative um, backlash. So all of that to say, this was definitely, definitely a Latino takeover at this year's Super Bowl, which I was living for it. My family was living for it. I'm so glad I got to witness this historical moment. This is the first Latina duo to ever headline at the Super Bowl. Careful. I said the first Latina duo, not the first Latina. So the first Latina to, I'm not sure she headlined, but she did perform at a Super Bowl was the Cuban artist, Gloria Stefan. She performed at the 1992 Super Bowl. I believe that was in Minneapolis. Again, not sure if she headlined, but she definitely did perform perform there. So, again, I'm just really happy that my family and I, we got to witness and soak up this amazing moment of, you know, Latina power, girl power, feminine energy. 
there were so many incredible and memorable moments from start to finish throughout their performance. I mean, I never knew Shakira was so musically talented. I mean, I grew up listening to her music. She always played on the Latino radio. My uncle, when he used to live with my family, he was a Shakira fanatic. So every time I was around him in the car, he'd play Shakira's um you know, CDs back then when you, when you used to listen to CDs. And then whenever I'd go into my uncle's room on the TV, when MTV was popping and they actually played music videos at the time, he always had uh, Shakira music videos playing. So I really grew up with um, a heavy influence from her and her music, just, you know, growing up listening to her in my own household. And again, I didn't know she was so musically talented. She was on the drums. She was on the electric guitar at one point. Um, and J-Lo as well. J-Lo, she was singing on stage with her daughter. And that was such a special moment, a cute moment. And her daughter can sing. She definitely, definitely got her vocals from her dad, Mark Anthony. Sorry, that's a little bit of shade towards J-Lo. I mean, I love J-Lo. I love her acting. However, her music, I'm not the biggest fan of I being totally honest. Like if I had to choose between listening to Shakira or listening to Jennifer Lopez, I'm going to choose Shakira. But that's not to knock down J-Lo. I think I I love the movies she's played in. I, I'm a fan of her acting. I just don't think she her vocals are really up to par compared to Shakira. And I know many other social media users, if you're listening to me right now, you're going to agree with me. All over social media, Shakira was trending. Why? Because it almost seemed, not almost, she did, if I'm being honest. She really stole the show. Like, Shakira, she was amazing. Again, she really put such an amazing performance so much it was so multicultural again we saw her belly dancing her vocal range she has such a unique voice like when you listen to Shakira on the radio or when you listen to her on a song you don't even need to know that it's actually Shakira to know it's Shakira you feel me like if you're listening to a song and it doesn't even need to say featuring Shakira you just know by her unique and distinct voice that that's Shakira. Like, she's really one of a kind. And after watching the Super Bowl halftime, it just made me even a bigger fan of hers. I kind of forgot about her, if I'm being honest. But she has... Those hips do not lie. They do not lie. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to cut into a really short break right now. When we come back, I'm going to still continue to talk about this amazing duo at this year's Super Bowl halftime. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to GSMC Entertainment Podcast. Just, I'm going to continue on to what we were discussing, and that is the Super Bowl halftime with Shakira and J-Lo. And I'm going to kind of backtrack and start from the very beginning of the performance, which Shakira, she opened the show. She came out first performing her disco hit, She Wolf. Who else listened to that back then and, like, was so excited when she opened the performance with the song? When she started playing She-Wolf, I literally howled because, for those of you who don't know, in her studio, in the studio song, the studio version, you, she actually, there's, like, a howling sound in the back. She goes, ow, like that. <laughs> and my family members and I, we all did that when she came out. 
So I was really happy when she started off um, that song, you know, for the very as the very first song in the performance. And then right after She Wolf, she then pays homage to her Lebanese heritage, her Middle Eastern heritage. Um, she then grabs a rope in her hand and she starts flaunting her belly dancing skills and with the opening lines of her 1998 hit song middle eastern latin house hit ojos así um which means eyes like this and again she starts freaking into this like belly dancing and she still got it like i said her hips have never lied and they will never lie like she's got it and it's crazy you know Again, we have to remember, she is 43, J-Lo is 50. And for these two ladies to be in their 40s and 50s and to be with that stamina and to be with have that high energy and give off that energy to their audience at their age, being mothers, that, that's truly admirable and amazing and inspirational. Like when I'm in my 40s and 50s, I hope to look like them. I hope I'm still able to pop lock and drop it like them and move like them like they're so youthful Shakira like I didn't I couldn't believe she's 43 I could not believe it she looks like she's 23 and that's I aspire to look like that when I'm older I don't know if it's the great Latina genes I see that you know a lot of Latinas age well so hopefully that happens to me as well and another fun fact Yesterday's Super Bowl was actually Shakira's 43rd birthday. So that's a really great way, an amazing way for her to kind of celebrate her birthday as being one of the first Latina duos um, to perform at such a huge all-American platform, an all-American event, really. Probably the biggest American event being viewed by millions and millions of people in their homes. So I, like, feel so just happy I got to witness that and I'm, I feel so happy for Shakira as well and in addition to um, the belly dancing that Shakira did during her performance she let loose a celebratory Arab whoop called and I really hope I say this correctly Zagruta so she let out this uh this whoop, I guess we call it, Zagruta. And there's been so many viral memes going around Twitter. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, there is a specific part where after she, cr oh, that's another thing. She crowd surfed. Like if I would have known Shakira was crowd surfing, I would have paid my $2,000 to <laughs> and fly out to Miami, get a ticket and have would have helped her. So I was bummed about that. And so right after she crowd surfed, she ba got back on stage and she looks in the camera. And she goes, blah, 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 blah. like she sticks her tongue, you know, in and out really quick. And to be honest, me as a viewer sitting at home with my family, we thought that was comical. We thought she did that because I don't know, it's Shakira. She can do whatever she wants. So we thought it was like a funny gesture on her part. But little did we know it's actually a celebratory Arab gesture in which the Zagruta, they do that. It signifies in Arab culture joy. So they do that when they're jo when they're they feel joyful. And apparently Shakira tends to do this at her concert. So I was really pleased with that um, with that little gesture um, culture signification that she did and that she brought to an American platform. And not only does she bring a lot of like Middle Eastern touches to her performance. Towards the end of her performance, she brought it all back home with an Afro-Colombian dance crew and Swing Latino Salsa troupe. And that was really great. I love the choreography. If I had to compare the choreography from Shakira compared to J-Lo's, I think I preferred... I mean, they're just very different styles. I think J-Lo's dancers and her performance and her choreography appeals more to the... Um, I guess the Latin Americans here who grew up in America but are of Latin descent as opposed to Shakira who she grew up in Barranquilla, Colombia um, and she has more of the like Afro-Colombian, Colombian, um, you know, roots within her. And I was just really pleased with all how multicultural this 
event performance was they truly educated american audiences on the african roots of many coastal colombian traditions including folk dances like the champeta and mapale which is what shakira was doing when she um dressed it was that like gold glittery outfit towards the end with all those dancers on stage that was the afro-colombian beads the afro-colombian sounds that she was dancing to the champeta so i'm just really pleased and it was refreshing to see that on american tv because i mean latinos and just we're such a melting pot and i they just really brought such a powerful message to this platform and I was just such a fan. Again, I could be a little more into this than, you know, other people because, again, I am Latina, so it kind of hits me. I, I interpret it differently from other viewers, people who probably – I mean, I feel like you don't even need to understand Spanish to enjoy the show. That's the beautiful thing about, like, Latino music, Spanish music. It's for everybody. It's – inclusive it's inviting people all over the world are playing our music and that's just like why i'm so um i like so happy and proud to be in this culture to be from this culture because that's really our core values like we really are trying to with our within our music we try to be super inviting and inclusive and you know it's for everybody it really really is and I just really like how Shakira, also Jayla, but I'm, I'm talking more about Shakira right now. I was just really pleased with Shakira's performance, how she brought all these different um, different touches. Again, Middle Eastern touches, the Arab, um, that Arab uh, gesture with the Zagruta sticking out her tongue and then the afro uh, Colombian dance. So I was super pleased with Shakira's performance. Um Super impactful and powerful message. I think um, the most impactful and powerful message slash moment of the night was um, when the camera, it was a bird's eye view and the camera panned down. And what it looked like, more metaphorically speaking, kids in cages. And I know many of you must know what I'm talking about. Again, there's many memes going around, many pictures of this moment going around of kids in cages. And this was actually during J Lo set. And then right after the camera panned from those kids, J Lo comes out wearing this huge like fur coat. On one side it's the American flag and on the inside she opens it up and it's the Puerto Rican flag. And I just thought that and while she's saying that she, you know, it's her song, Let's Get Loud. And that was the most powerful moment of the night, I feel like. Definitely sending out a message to all American viewers, audiences. And I won't get too political about it because I'm sure you guys, just by me mentioning, you already know what I'm talking about. But the kids in cages, you know, the Puerto Rican flag being... um displayed in that manner and then them saying let's get loud definitely sends a message uh there's been other interviews as well as to why j-lo did this she even explains it so if you guys want to get more into that political side go watch those videos because i will not be discussing them on here but definitely i loved that moment it spoke volumes to me and again it's just crazy I was just so amazed by these two ladies and their stamina their athleticism Again, J-Lo was on that pole working it. Say whatever you need to say about that lady, but she still got it at 50 years old. She is doing more than what us 20-year-olds are doing. Like, she's on that pole, all that core strength. I mean, I loved it. I was a fan. My family and I, we were not offended by it. We did not think it was racy. It's still family-friendly. I mean, people are um, bashing them bashing Shakira and J-Lo saying it's not family friendly because Shakira was showing her belly and J-Lo was on the pole but do you all remember that Adam Levine was half naked last year Super Bowl hmm so do not come for my Latina queens okay they did their thing they came out they showed out they shut it down and to top it off to make this event even more unforgettable these two Latina queen Latina queens brought out Two of the most popular, uh, most listened to um, 
Latino artists of our time right now. And that was Bad Bunny and J Belvin. When they hit the stage, I lost it. I went crazy. I love Bad Bunny. I love J Belvin. Uh, Bad Bunny, he came out when Shakira started getting all sexy on the floor. And I forgot what song she started to sing. Oh, Chantaje. She started singing Chantaje. And then uh, Bad Bunny comes out and he starts singing his hit song, Talo Calladita. And I loved it. Like, I was just living for them. I, all these, like, amazing Latino influences taking over an all-American platform. I was living for it. Jay Bavin also performed one of my favorite songs, one of my favorite songs to work out to, Que Calor, with a really heavy Afro beat to that song as well. So, again, it's just like their music is so inviting. It's for everybody. My non, Some of my non-Spanish-speaking friends are huge fans of these artists and like i point proven it's not it's not just for latinos like their music truly is for everybody and many other celebrities as well took to social media to congratulate congratulate these two queens including leslie grossman lebron james kim kardashian west lady gaga and many many more um you know telling showing their love and appreciation towards shakira and jlo how You know, they did amazing and they truly did. I think when I was watching everyone's Instagram stories last night, the majority of my followers were watching uh, or were posting um, the halftime show rather than the actual game. I think it's also because, I mean, I'm based in California. Half of us are 49er fans. The other half are Raiders fans. So I think that's also why a lot of people didn't want to really want to post, you know, the final score or anything of the night because the Niners ended up losing the Super Bowl. Um, But all of that to say, I was so obsessed with this performance. Um, For me to say there was, I think it's definitely top two um, best halftime shows ever. I cannot knock down Queen B, Beyonce. She did her thing too when she performed. I forget what year, but... Um, when she did her like Malcolm X tribute, uh, she l- had a very powerful message as well. So I'm not going to knock down my queen B Beyonce cause she did her thing. Shakira and JLo did their thing. Um, so they are definitely top two, uh, Super Bowl, best Super Bowl halftime performances. People will be talking about them for the next few years as one of the best performances, and if I had to compare Shakira and J-Lo, who was more memorable, who had more of an impact, or at least for me personally, I'm going to go with Shakira. Shakira did her thing. J-Lo did too, but I was more entertained by Shakira. Like I almost at one point wanted J-Lo to not even come back on stage because I just wanted to see Shakira lead the performance from start to finish. And if we're being honest here, I think Shakira could have headlined the entire show by herself. She has enough hit songs that many people, billions of people love um, that she could have headlined this year's Super Bowl by herself. Again, that's just my opinion. And that's I'm a J-Lo fan, too. But in this case, I think Shakira should, could have done it by herself. Again, I'm just obsessed with how multicultural this event was, paying homage to Latino roots, paying homage to Afro-Colombian songs, Afro beats, with a touch of Middle Eastern influence on an American platform, probably the biggest American platform. I'm a fan. And again, that full feminine energy that I witnessed, the Latina power, they really shut it down. And in the context of American pop culture at large, this year's halftime show undeniably, you know, represents a watershed moment for Latinos in the United States. And I know I can speak for many, many Latinos who are listening to me right now. And I'm going to cut into another break. When we come back, it's going to be a little bit about baby talk. All right. So don't miss it. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. 
from news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. SMC Entertainment Podcast. We are done talking about the Super Bowl performance, even though I can talk about that amazing halftime show all day. We're moving on into an entirely different subject, a little bit about babies. So let's start off with the queen, the baby queen, Stormy Webster. We're going to be talking about all her star-studded birthday bash. I mean, what do billionaires do? They do billionaire things, and that includes throwing a lavish, extravaganza party for a two-year-old. Yes, Kylie Jenner, she threw an extravagant party in honor of her daughter, Stormy. Um, she just turned two on Saturday, Saturday, February 1st, and this was the same day that they threw this massive event, her birthday party, and she named it Stormy World 2. For Stormy's first birthday Last year, they also, the theme was Stormy World. And this is, um, this whole, uh, theme of the party is inspired by Stormy's father, Travis Scott, rapper Travis Scott, from his 2018 Astro World album cover. So, for those of you who don't know or you were confused by the whole Stormy World, that is where the reference is coming from to kind of pay homage to her dad's album, which that's really cute, really sweet. And the 22-year-old Kylie Cosmetics founder, billionaire, crazy, uh, she gave fans an inside look at the festivities by sharing plenty of photos and videos through her Instagram story. She previously teased us about the party back in December 2019 when she tweeted that it was going to be quote unquote insane. And it definitely was insane. Like after looking and watching her stories, I watched Chloe's, you know, all the sisters, the whole clan. I was like, I sh Kylie Jenner, can you throw me a birthday party? Dang. Like it was so extravagant, so lavish. I mean, if I had a billionaire money, I would do the same thing. I would do the same thing for my child, spoil her. So I see nothing wrong with that. If you have the finances, go for it. And the entrance to the party, it was kind of creepy, if I'm being honest. It was comprised of a giant, like, blow-up head made to look like Stormy. And again, it's inspired by Travis Scott's um, album cover. And his album co cover, it's a giant head of Travis Scott. So to kind of replicate, uh, to make a replica of that, they did the same thing for Stormy's birthday party, but it looked kind of creepy. If you guys have seen videos or pictures of the event, then you know what I'm talking about. Did you guys think it was creepy too? I don't know. It could just be me. And so once after they got past that creepy head of Stormy, <laughs> uh, guests walked in and they went through some, it looked like an enchanted forest situation. So it was like beautiful lights. Uh, iridescent light hanging from the ceiling it was really cute like actually kind of romantic somewhere i probably would want to get proposed to <laughs> like that was the situation i was kind of imagining when they were taking us through this entrance via instagram stories and inside once you got past that enchanted for situation inside was a table that had guidebooks guidebooks you guys for a birthday party that's how massive this event was there was literally a map mapping out all the attractions and where to find them within this party i just want to know i'm pretty sure they threw this party in la la area where in the world do they does she find space to rent out such massive space you know like I, listen to this so there were 
there was three main attractions. It was like an amusement style uh, party theme, right? Because it's like Stormy's World. So there were Trolls World, which is like a cartoon character. Uh, Frozen World, which is that famous Disney movie. And then Stormy World. So all things Stormy. And in the Frozen themed room, they had music from the hit Disney movie playing. Uh, they had a woman dressed as Elsa. They even had an ice sculpture of Olaf, a craft station, a bounce house. They even had furniture made from ice. How crazy is that? Like, how extravagant is that for a two-year-old? And these babies probably don't even realize what an extravagant, lavish lifestyle party they're living in right now. That's the crazy thing, too. Like, they're growing. I always think about that, like, rich celebrity babies, how they're so accustomed to all of these, you know, lavish things. And they probably grew up thinking that's what normal people do and live but it's like totally not the case so i'm always curious as to how these kids will navigate through life and what their thoughts will be but again that's not my parenting skills those are the celebrities and their choices and their parenting skills kind of went on a rant but anyways so there were literal theme park rides you guys like literal theme park rides in stormy's world and that specific um attraction of the party it was really cute she actually had a literal theme park ride on there it's it's like a replica of disneyland's dumbo ride the kid one where they just kind of go in circles so they did that for stormy's world um they also had like stormy world merchandise again giving reference to astro world from travis scott's album so they were like selling like merchandise shirts um sweaters that said stormy world so it was really cute and they had an extravagant cake with lights on it like it was just i felt poor okay i felt very poor watching these instagram stories like i just had to log off for a second because i'm like i need to be there okay and some of these celebrity guests that were in attendance of this massive event were Haley bieber Grammy winning singer Rosalia, Chrissy Teigen, John Legend, makeup artist Harouche, and many, many more. I mean, truly, this event put every single birthday party, wedding, anything, every any party event you've ever attended to shame. It really did. And the fact that it possibly even put like could put Disneyland to shame. Like that's how just extravagant and lavish this party was but again this is not me judging her that's if i had billionaire money i would do the same thing for my child and i mean happy birthday stormy two years old she's absolutely adorable and i just know she must have had like the greatest time ever so that just makes me happy and since we're on the talk of babies something also exciting that happened a few days ago so Singer Sierra and Seattle superstar football player Russell Wilson announced their third pregnancy. Four days ago, both Sierra and Russell Russell Wilson uh, announced that baby number three was on the way via social media. And the way they announced it was extremely cute as well. So Sierra posted a photo of herself like on top of a rock or a huge boulder while on vacation in Turks and Caicos showing showing off her baby bump and the caption read number three. That's all it said. Concise, straight to the point. We already know what's up. Baby number three on the way. And what I think is even sweeter is that Russell Wilson also captioned it. He posted a, a, a very similar picture, but instead it was like a selfie style. So he took a selfie of himself and then Sierra's in the background showing her baby bump. And he also captioned it number three. And why I thought is that, you know, minor detail is super thoughtful and sweet is because for those of you who don't know or don't follow the couple, Sierra's first son, first baby, uh, Little Future, is actually not russell wilson's son but it's sierra's son with hip-hop rapper future but the way that russell wilson takes care of little future and he considers him as his own like that is so admirable and what a man honestly to take someone else's child and like really be like no he's mine too and like he takes care of him he looks after him 
that's just so admirable. And I think that's why I'm like such a fan of him and the couple in general. And they also, Sierra and uh, Russell Wilson, they have a two-year-old daughter together, Sienna, which is Russell Wilson's technically first daughter. But again, all three of them are his kids. And I just love that about him, that he's like, they're all my kids. I love them all equally. I'm not going to treat the oldest any different just because biologically he doesn't have my blood. So I just respect Russell Wilson so much. And I wish them the absolute best, Sierra and Russell Wilson. And you guys, that's going to wrap up today's entertainment episode. We covered a lot. The amazing Super Bowl halftime show by Shakira and J-Lo. We covered Stormy's extravagant birthday party. And then the amazing announcement of the third baby on the way by Sierra and Russell Wilson. If you guys liked what I had to cover today, what I talked about today, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And catch me here next week at GSMC Entertainment Podcast. I wish you all a very happy and healthy week. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.